now let me introduce you to our first speaker of orientation program his grace radhesham prabhu ji he is not only iit mumbai topper but also president of iskon pune for last 22 years a leading community of over 6000 members he is compiler of youth books like stress to smile five volume essence of geeta etc he is designer of discover your life a six session course on youth and corporates he is global excellence award winner for educating youth in bhagavad gita he is jiva goswami award winner for innovative youth outreach he is gdo that is global duty officer for youth outreach visiting boston and other places in usa for 2 months per year he is youth trainer in last 25 years in all leading iits nits and other academic institutes which reaches out to major cities like pune kolkata mumbai hyderabad chennai and many more he has presented seminars at mit boston stanford university university of washington cornell university etc he is corporate seminar presenter at amazon bank of america infosys dosh bank cognizant persistent and many more so i request director dr pt kulkarni sir to well radhesham prabhu ji on this occasion very good hare krishna ज्ञानतिरंदनशलाकया चक्षुवन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम फस्ट आफ आल आल फॉर मै नमस्कार टू मै गुरु बै हूज ग्रेस वाट एवर लिटल नॉलेज ऐ पर्स इज इज ग्रेस ई आफर मै सल्यूटेशन टू हेम इन द बिग्निंग ई नो डॉक्टर कुलकर्णी जी मेनी मेनी इयर्स बिफोर probably 10 15 years ago i have met him and i have been coming to see him sometimes in the college and uh, psct has been one of the colleges which is not only known for its competence in producing some of the best students across the globe but also known for its values and uh, uh, good character and this kind of induction programs for 8 days morning to evening with parents and uh, the children together students together i really i deeply appreciate this this is most essential in this day uh, which is so busy these days so i was given the topic of uh, healthy lifestyle uh, for a happy life <clears throat> so when we talk about lifestyle it is to do with our habits so <clears throat> i heard a funny story about habits there was once upon a time mm, yeah Uh, water melon seller he was caught by the football team because they didn't have the goal goalie person to stand in the goal post they requested him you are always used to catching watermelons in the hand can you please you know be at the goal and catch the ball make sure it doesn't go beyond you so he was very happy to do that service he was standing but when the ball came he caught it and threw it can you guess why he did that and that's what he would do with the watermelons he would pick it up and throw it in the lorry and that's what he did so habits are like that you just get used to them unconsciously it becomes integral part of your being over a period of time and how does it happen i'll show you with the video you can just go ahead next one Thank you. 
did you observe at the end this fellow became a very fatty fellow huh? so eating junk food always choosing the radio over the book huh? and always uh, kicking away the uh, you know exercise tool huh? and you know when we waste time we get used to it and wasting time becomes a habit mm-hmm. you as you saw that mm-hmm. so when we talk about habits habits according to oxford dictionary is a settled tendency you know? it becomes like a set pattern in the way you speak the way you behave even the way you think also you know? it become becomes like a set pattern for you over a period of time now what do you call as a good habit or what do you call as a bad habit how do you say like even in the bhagavad gita the gunas we say rajaguna tamaguna sattvaguna how do you categorize a food as sattvaguna say for example cow's milk we call it as sattvaguna na buffalo's milk we call it as rajaguna passion producing why if you drink buffalo's milk you become fat if you drink cow's milk you become alert and sharp now why does that happen if you think very deeply you can observe in a village when a cow's child is born what do you call it? a calf a small calf within a couple of hours the calf will start jumping and frolicking all around you will see that just it takes a couple of hours after birth and a calf can locate its mother even in a thousand cows compare the same with a buffalo's child a buffalo's child cannot get up for two days after taking birth and ask a buffalo's child to identify its mother it will go from one buffalo to another not knowing which is my mother they don't have the ability to see you understand the difference between the two the buffalo is dull and it can't identify the mother but the calf is alert and it can identify mother even in a thousand cows similarly when we drink our smell it nourishes the brain tissues and you will be alert in even hearing well remembering well repeating well mm-hmm. on the other hand when you drink buffalo's milk you just become fat so the foods that we talk about habits the type of when you put the food inside what does it do to you when you put junk food it titates it titillates your tongue mm-hmm. but doesn't nourish your body mm-hmm. rather it becomes uh, undigested arm we call it in ayurveda mm-hmm. it goes into the belly and creates problem for you later on indigestion and dullness and dizziness and laziness lethargy all those things come when you eat uh, you know pure foods like vegetarian you know like fruits cereals spices milk and all those things that nourishes your body and nourishes your mind too so uh, when you put something in the mouth the effect if it is going to be nidra alasya pramad that means it is tamaguna we call it nidra means very famous one nowadays too much sleeping alas means lazy laziness pramad means madness putting substances into the body which are harmful to the body that is pramad these are all tamaguna we call it. so we don't take tamaguni foods like drinking liquor or smoking cigarettes taking drugs tobacco there was one billboard i saw in pune there was a picture of two boys the same boy the boy very handsome and the same boy whose mouth was filled with ulcers because after putting tobacco in the mouth his mouth became filled with ulcers and below something was written in marathi although i don't know marathi i found out what it is jing kshanachi vat maranachi it was written jing kshanachi means that one momentary kick it leads paves way to uh, i mean death like that so there are physical bad habits and physical good habits which you saw in the video just a few minutes ago so similarly there are also mental good habits bad habits also similarly verbal good habits bad habits we can talk in all the three uh, levels now go ahead please you see the researchers have shown that 70 77% of everything we think is negative and working against us that's due to the wrong pattern of thinking next yeah 70% of the illnesses are self induced is saying self induced means we only uh, by our own erratic thinking and speech and behavior we welcome problems in our life like for example my tongue doesn't have a bone but i can say something to somebody they may break my bones if i speak some vulgar words to them is it not true that means my tongue can become my enemy 
isn't it? Say, I have money in my pocket. Hmm? With this money, you know, I can uh, uh, spend some money, you know, make some people catch a thief and uh, hand him over to police. Or this money, if it come, falls in the hands of the thief, then that can work against me. Is it not true? Just like recently I was seeing, in Boston they are designing these robots. Hmm? They are thinking that in future we don't have to have soldiers going to the wars. We can have robots hmm, going to the wars and you can control them remotely. And they are showing how the robots can detect the platform. Even if it's a slant platform, they can detect, they can jump from one platform to another. Many things they can do. They can walk on the you know, forest floor without any, they can enter into the fire also. Hmm? Many things the robots can do, many advantages. But there is one big disadvantage, they say. If the enemy hacks your robo, then your robo will act against you and you have to run away. Huh? Is it not true? Similarly, your mind is like a robo, it can do so many good things for you. Mm -hmm. But your mind can, if it acts against your interests, it can become your enemy. Mm -hmm. You see, in 2019, one of the IITs in India, three students committed suicide by jumping off the seventh or eighth story building. You see, these are all IIT boys. You know, they really got top scores. They are smart in their academics, undoubtedly. Otherwise, they wouldn't have got through. Still, their mind took over them. You can see that. Because they didn't learn to control the mind. Let me ask you a question. Would you appreciate a flood or a dam? Which has energy? Flood has energy or dam has energy? Yes, any of you? He's saying, damn, both have energy. Yeah, he's saying one is kinetic, one is potential. Sad is saying. See, the uh, flood is destructive energy. Dam is constructive energy. So you want your mind to be like a flood or like a dam. Yeah? Dam, because when you have it like a dam, you can uh, open the dam anytime you wish and you can use it for irrigation purposes as per your need. But flood actually carries away the cattle. It destroys the houses, kills the humans. Is it not true? So, modern day youth's mind, is it like a dam or is it like a flood? Ask yourself. It's a serious question we should think about. Because many of them do not know how not to waste their energy. All the problems in society, if you see, they all have the root in three bad qualities that Lord Krishna describes in Gita. Trividam narakasya edam dwaram nashanam atmanaha kama krodat tatalo bas tasmat etatrayam tajet. He is saying, three enemies you have to give up if your mind has to be clean. He says, lust, anger and greed. He says, these are the three enemies. Lust means adamant desire for the prohibited things. Like smoking a cigarette or drinking liquor. It is not going to do any good to you. It momentarily makes you feel a kick and then it brings you to depression zone, impels you to smoke more and drink more. Then again you go up. Again it brings you to further depression and one ends up becoming a chain smoker or an alcoholic or a drug addict like that. It doesn't do any good at all. So it, uh, prohibited things should be given up. If you are attached to it, that is called lust. Like when I was a small kid, my mom took me to a shop and got some two, three gems and she gave me the hand. That was the first time I ate gems. You all know what is gems? When I ate it, I felt, my Lord, it is so good. I asked her, where does this come from? She showed me the packet and I told her, give the packet, I'll take care of it. Guess what I did? I finished it and then I asked for, I told her, take ten more packets. She said, if I take ten more, all your teeth will be gone. But what do you think I did? I was very adamant and crying. So, when uh, she told me, this is prohibited for you, you should learn to eat fruits. But I would throw away the orange and apple and want for go for the chocolate, which is very bad for the teeth. This is the problem with this world. Many of us, we don't know what is good, what is bad. And even if you know something is bad, we become attached to it. And that's called lust, we call it. And when you don't get a chance to fulfill your lusty desires, then it becomes anger. When it is fulfilled, it becomes greed. Mm -hmm. So lust, anger and greed are the three big enemies, he says. I heard an interesting saying, when you go from need to greed, you have to bleed. 
it is said. Like you see, a rat can eat rice or wheat. All those things are easily available for the rat. But the rat wants the pakoda or something which is hanging in the rat trap. So when he goes inside, he gets trapped because he was greedy for it. So you will see that in the modern times, people have unhealthy comparisons. Why did these boys commit suicide? Because they made unhealthy comparisons with others. Yes, you certainly can make a healthy comparison. Somebody is better than you, go to them and learn from them. Somebody is inferior to you, help them. Somebody is better than you, don't be envious of them. Somebody is inferior to you, don't ridicule them. Somebody is equal to you, be friendly with them. Somebody is equal to you, don't brag about yourself. So these are all beautiful teachings in the Srimad Bhagavatam that I have come across. So in this way, the habits of the mind, I am just sharing with you a few things. The, I was telling about the mind. So your habits can make or mar your career. Go ahead. You see, why even the Western companies, I was just recently flipping through a few pages where big personalities like Pichai and others, you know, the, you know, the Hmong companies, huh? the, the Meta, Amazon, and uh, Apple, and all this, Netflix, and Google, and such companies, many of the top people are Indians. What is the reason for that? Don't you think Americans have a better communication skill? They have better managerial skills. They have many students coming out of the Harvard Business School and such schools. They have one one university with 30, 40,000 students. Why don't they employ from there? Why do you think they come to India to employ all of you? Go ahead. So, yeah, next. Are they, you know, you, as you said there, Indians are hardworking and sincere, cultured, they take responsibility, well-mannered, they're accountable, and they're responsible. There are many qualities you can list. And where do these qualities come from, if you see? Actually, the wisdom literatures in India, uh, right from young age, people have been cultivating good qualities. Like once Gandhi said, in his fifth standard or so, he saw one drama of uh, Ramayana, which deeply touched him. He wanted to emulate the model of the character of Lord Ram in his life. Because Lord Ram teaches how to deal with your brothers, how to deal with your wife, how to deal with your parents, how to deal with the public, how to deal with even people who are not in a very big position like people like boatman, guha, or monkeys like Sugriva, or Rakshasas like Vibhishan. Lord Ram teaches that. So he was very deeply touched by that. So unfortunately, in the modern times, people have become very preoccupied with video games. People have become preoccupied with, uh, you know, so many YouTubes, uh, YouTube videos and everything, Netflix uh, movies, many of the imaginary movies, which don't pass the value to you. Today's heroes and heroines are Hollywood, Bollywood actors and actresses. So when the values are not coming from the childhood up to now, Naturally, you know, the value systems, the belief system, the assumptions and the mental models that you, we carry with us uh, can be very destructive. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest problem. So, let us see. Go further. Yeah, the nature of habit is when you, you know, when you, uh, when you remove the hatch, it is still a bit. Huh? When you remove the A, it's still a bit. When you remove B, it's still it, it remains. Because once we get into a wrong track, it takes time to come out. Huh? Because we get, it's a set pattern. So scientists say that 51 days if you do continuously one particular habit, then you will be able to give up the old habit. You can break the old habit and adopt a new habit. First of all, we should know what is old habit, new habit. In that connection, I want to ask you a very important question. When you compare the animals and humans, you know, they look similar in many respects. Animals eat, we also eat. Animals sleep, we also sleep. Animals reproduce, humans also reproduce. Animals show their claws and teeth and they fight. Humans also do that. Of course, humans do with uh, scuds and missiles or, you know, such kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think essentially is the difference between animals and humans? Anybody can raise the hand? Any of you? Essentially, what's the main difference? Or there is no difference? What do you think? Yeah, there is one hand up. Yeah, yes? Yeah? She is saying thinking. Okay, thank you, madam. One behind. Anyone can hear and tell me? 
conscious he says i think is it yeah you heard it anybody we have a mic you can pass it on to him. yeah anybody from this side yeah yes sir he saying learning new things saying okay yeah expressions okay yes yeah he is saying difference between good and bad what did you say we have the ability to think consciously okay think consciously actually animals can also think quite well if you see a cat goes to the kitchen and sees the mother is you know boiling the milk and it goes with a silent uh, it puts the nails down walks very carefully into the kitchen so that you won't make any noise hmm? goes and drinks the milk and silently sneaks out hmm? you will see that they also think very well animals can also think they can even think rationally also but they think only about eating sleeping mating defending they don't think about anything else i don't know whether you have seen videos animals also have feelings they also can help one another do you know that you go to the youtube and just put animals uh, helping one another uh, gif files also you will get many yes so we have social skills we have social skill what do you think about uh, honey bees don't they have social skill they have a queen bee they have a drone they have worker bees and they work so coordinatedly as if it is like a factory or a company they are very socially doing very well hmm? anybody else i guess and he is saying we can share our life experiences with others in your language whatever is your mother tongue but animals do it in their language too they also talk do you know that in fact there is animal language which was known to nakula sahadev hmm? they knew how the birds talk with each other morning you will see that one cuckoo will say coo another cuckoo will say coo they are talking something huh? we may not understand what they are talking but that's a particular language they also share actually mm, yeah yes one hand up there yeah you try to provide and uh, he is saying we are more civilized is it yeah 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 what is the first part road huh? growth okay growth and civilized so okay let us say that animals are eating in the railway platform and we are eating in a five star hotel is the quality of eating different so animals are sleeping in pune platform and we are sleeping in a dunlop pillow bed space age bed is that civilization anyway much different from them because the activity is the same so animals are showing claws and teeth and fighting so we are going and scuds and throwing bombs is it any different the quality of activity is the same That, that means we can maybe we can call our results as deluxe edition of animals or a royal edition or something, huh? but the activity is the same. So there are some very essential differences that I will share with you now. You will see, for example, a pig eats stool. You know that, huh? and the, and the pig, you will see that it it doesn't discriminate between mother, sister, daughter, or anything. It will mix with anybody. Huh? when it has a sex urge it will go and mix with anybody it has no discrimination whereas in human society you will see you have a great respect for your mother sister and daughter there is a very divine kind of relationship you don't uh, um, deal with the way that the pigs are dealing you will see that animals act by instinct humans can act by uh, looking before they leap any action that's the main difference you will see that Hmm? animals act by instinct as soon as there is an instinct for example duryodhana acted like an animal hmm? if you see he said i want to wipe out the pandavas and i want to take over the whole world from their hands hmm? that was his mood but yudhishthira maharaj said we are fighting like dogs for a piece of meat hmm? i would rather go back to forest than fight a big battle like that he said this nobility this noble thought hmm, of forgiveness hmm? Uh, this noble thought of ethical moral and spiritual behavior is only possible for a human being not for animals like you will see smaller snakes are eaten by bigger snakes do you know that smaller fishes are eaten by bigger fishes sometimes a dog lays a dozen puppies after laying the puppies is very hungry it eats four five puppies do you know that how many of you heard about it correct you know that right is there any human being after begetting a child you eat the child you will not do that you have morality you have ethical behavior you have spiritual behavior 
you think before you speak you think before you act this is possible only for a human being dharme na hina pashubir samanam it is said you remove that dharma from human life we are no better than two legged animals mahabharata says that ahar nidra payamai tunam cha samanyam etat pashubir naranam dharmo hite sham adiko visheshu dharme na hina pashubir samanam the word dharma is used <coughs> what is this word dharma <coughs> dharma means your natural propensity what is the most natural thing for you if you think about it deeply your most natural thing is for you is to love you love your mother you love your father initially you love only your family then you love your caste people then you love your state people then you love your country people tomorrow some of you may get a green card in america and settle also then you love america also then you love all human beings but even if you love all humans your love is still considered incomplete if you are killing a cow or a any other creature innocent creature your love will be considered complete when you love god we call it as a love god love all we call it so love god means like a master switch you put the master switch on fans lights everything gets on you switch it off everything is switched off so when your love expands 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 to the point of understanding of the one supreme truth that time your love that natural uh, outflowing love is actually called dharma and that love leads to service you will see that when we are aligned with the universal laws it is called as conformity we call it and when you live in cooperation with other living beings it is called unity these two principles are the universal laws please all of you repeat conformity and unity conformity with universal laws loudly conformity with universal laws and unity with living beings so conformity with universal laws universal laws is vertical unity with living beings is horizontal if you do these two things in your life you will never have suffering in your life you will see that because many times you see see that in our interpersonal dealing with others we have clashes because we don't deal with them in unity we deal with them in a way to exploit them actually in this world the exploiting tendency is animalistic tendency if you rise above and come so animal human divine there are three platforms if you follow basic good habits which i'm going to show you very soon huh, they will lead you to human behavior then from human there is there are another set of activities we do to become divine so when you go from human sorry animal to human to divine you become more and more noble and you become very lovable you become very endearing to everybody so you will become actually even worshipable by others provided one goes from this animal platform to human so in in each of us there is a an animal and an angel in our own hearts so we have to evoke the angel in us and defeat the animal in us if we do that that's the meaning of cultivating good habits go ahead and now we can go ahead fast yeah see here these are these are all things which uh, go beha- go the, the previous two these are showing how the uh, employers are thinking about their employees every one hour he goes for a fitment smoke break yeah go ahead see always uh, is unwell is diseased always i can't rely on him he gets into unnecessary affairs yes you know he has a broken marriage and uh, he is not attentive in work he is spoiled brat he quarrels with everybody yeah he has psychological issues and he is always depressed uh, video on know that drinking drugs and fast food are bad for you the bit that i like the most is the skip but when it comes to young brits nothing gets in the way of a good time
So, the, one of the main, very important goals of education is to build the character. And further, beyond character, one should bring about a heart transformation. A cruel person should become a compassionate person. A selfish person should become a selfless person. A rigid person should become an uh, adaptable person. A arrogant person should become a humble person. Angry person should become a peaceful person. Mm. Greedy person should become a satisfied person. So this kind of heart transformation is one of the goals of education. Otherwise, if you are just increasing profuse information with no wisdom, um, that, would be, that would make us like empty personalities. Mm. Like you saw here, these are, all, these are not, not done by uneducated fools. These are done by educated people. Mm. Such kinds of things. Why would anyone at all put such substances into the body and hurt oneself? So I'm going to now come to the concluding point now. In the Gita, Arjuna asked about habits also to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna told him that two things only you have to do at any, every platform, at body, mind, intelligence, and ego. At all levels, only two, two things you have to do. He uses two words in Sanskrit. Abhyasena to kaunteya vairagyena cha grihyate, he says. One word is called abhyas, another one is called vairagya. So, he says that the good things should be cultivated repeatedly for them to sink into your system. For example, sleep early, rise early. I sleep at 9 and get up at 3 in the morning. And rest 18 hours I can work without taking any break at all. Like uh, once I get up in the morning 3, till night 9 o'clock I don't lie down anytime. Because according to doctors, 9 to 12 is equal to six hours of sleep. Do you know that? Mm. Because that is the time your body regenerates itself, recuperates itself internally. Till night, nine o'clock, your external body is active. After nine, the internal body becomes active. All the uh, pitta and other things, they secrete. You can see that cycle of uh, sleep, uh, nine to 10, 10 to 11, what all happens in your body. Any doctor will tell you. Mm. So early to bed and early to rise makes you healthy, wealthy and wise. So I memorize shlokas in all the early morning hours. Mm. Once you memorize it, it just goes into your system forever. You can remember thousands of shlokas, you can remember theorems, difficult concepts and all. So, uh, uh, this is one good habit. You won't get this habit unless you practice. If you're sleeping at 3 o'clock in the morning, you can make it 2 o'clock. <laughs> then make it 1 o'clock. Every month, slowly, slowly, you move the clock. Uh, you, I have a video also with me, which talks about why top-notch CEOs of Apple and Amazon and all get up at 4 a.m. in the morning. There is a video. You can find it out in the net, you will find it out in the YouTube. So they all are rising at 4 a.m. because early morning you were thinking, uh, your uh, innovation, your creativity is very fresh in the morning. You get new ideas, new direction, new solutions in the early morning hours. One should not immediately jump into taking a digital media and I mean getting into computer or mobile. One should do some breathing and exercises and think very deeply to come up with innovative ideas. So, <clears throat> one habit I told you now, early to bed and early to rise. So, vairagya means one should give up those things which are unfavorable for such early rising. For example, um, you know, repeatedly going late night creates a habit for you. Huh? In the same manner, about eating I told you, about sleeping, about exercising, about, these are all on a physical platform. Then you go to the um, mental platform. Lord Krishna says five things, he says. Mana, prasada, samyatvam, maunam, atmam, nigraha, bhava, samshuddha. He says, learn to cultivate satisfaction, not unhealthy comparisons. Then he says, uh, simplicity, not duplicity. Because duplicitous mind will, uh, like, a, like a mantra or like shakuni, that type of mind will create, diplomacy will create a lot of inner stress for you. If you are very straightforward in speech and very open-minded, you are likely to be more happier. So, and Maunam, he says, very wisely use your words. Ration your words, he says. Do not unnecessarily speak, unless you can speak meaningfully. Don't bluff. But many people nowadays, we say, they talk and talk and talk like a chatterbox without much meaning. So we should control our speech. But speaking is also releasing energy. So he says, Maunam, like we chant the holy name. Every religion talks about chanting. Buddhists chant Namo Abhida Butsu. Christians chant Hail Mary. Like Muslims chant Namaz. Similarly, I chant Hare Krishna Mantra. We chant. 
So that chant is also, we are releasing the energy by chanting, but that is very energy producing. It gives you inner, inner strength, a lot of inner strength, courage, confidence, and stability, humility, many qualities it gives. So, Manaprasada Samyatma Maunam, Atma Vinigram means self control. He says that things which should not be taken in shouldn't be taken in. So, he says that uh, learn the control in the mind, why the mind is like this, and the five senses are like this. Like, Shrotram, Chakshus, Prashnam, Rasanam, Granam, eyes, nose, ears, tongue, skin. They are like these five input giving senses to the mind. So, if the mind is controlled by intelligence, then the mind can control the senses. Like uh, five horses are compared to the senses, ropes are compared to mind, and the intelligence is compared to driver. So, if the driver is strong, he can pull the ropes, and when he pulls the ropes, the horses are controlled. So, today, you can see that due to the lack of control of the senses, many students are suffering. Many times people open the book, but they are not able to concentrate because mind is wandering elsewhere. Mind is just dragging them somewhere else. Yeah, they don't have focus, they don't have concentration, and they have hyperactive mind. These are real problems nowadays. So when mind is controlled, you can actually do one thing at a time. Sleep while you sleep, study while you study, play while you play, pray while you pray. And then when you are, when you are doing one thing, you will not be meddling it with anything else. You can be very focused on one activity, just like a magnifying glass focusing at a focal point. You can burn a paper or cotton, you will get that focal point very well, if you have controlled the mind. And I told you in the beginning of the class today, how do you control the mind? These three impurities have to be removed, lust, anger and greed. And the removal mechanism is the manastrayate iti mantra, it is said. There are many meditation processes, you all know that, people do deep breathing exercises, people uh, meditate on some point and things like that. But the most effective method in this age is the chanting of the mantra. Like I told you, we repeat the mantra and we try to concentrate. And by that concentration, gradually the mental impurity is burned away, exactly like the magnifying glass with, at a focal point can burn away paper or cotton. It can burn away. Then when mind is purified, mind becomes light like cotton. It becomes very light. When mind is light, it's very easy to do things in a very focused way. So. Abhyasa means repeated activity of good actions. For example, doctor tells you, take this food and that food is patya. Don't, like yeah, somebody has typhoid. You know, he says, take bland diet and don't take, you know, pakoda, samosa, bhaji and all the oily items. <laughs> Keep them away, he says. So you should follow that. 21 days they follow that. Then one becomes cured of the typhoid, isn't it? So Abhyasa and Vairagya, two things are said. And also, uh, one interesting story from the Vedic literature I heard about one very great poet. There was one Gurukul boy who went to a Gurukula and the teacher found him very dull and he sent him home. On the way back, he saw an amazing sight. He saw one lady was drawing water from the well, from the ground. So her rope was going through the stone and it was making a mark on the stone. It was making some impression on the stone. So the boy was very surprised. The stone is hard. The rope is soft, but how is the rope able to make an impression on the stone? And that is because of repeated moving, repeated movement. And an click, idea clicked his mind. So he went back to the Gurukul and told the teacher, please give me one more chance. And now I will repeatedly practice. So he repeatedly practiced and he went on to become Kalidas later on, the same student huh? who wrote Kumara Sambhava and many other books like that. So good habits have to be practiced repeatedly. So. Uh, when uh, when we give training in our temple, many managers come. We have a big temple in Kadraj Kondwa here, not very far from here. So many top-notch managers come, CEOs come, many cinema actors, actresses come, builders come, students also come, children come. In a year, about eight lakh people come to our temple. In a year, this big temple in Kadraj Kondwa. And if you see, we rise early in the morning. We we come assemble by 4:30 in the morning. Then 4.30 we have Mangala Arati, we have, we have Mantra Meditation, we have, and we have a uh, class also in the morning. And then it's a very pleasant morning, you know, many people coming together. And like our singing and dancing which we do yeah, in devotion to God, it's a very meaningful exercise. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you remember I had gone to one uh, corporate company where there was a stress management seminar going on. Huh? So the managers were told, you touch this wall and touch that wall, and 20 times those who touch and come, you'll get a prize. So they made them run between the walls 
20 times and then they were given a gift of a pen or something like that. I asked that uh, seminar conductor, why did you make them run? He said, I wanted to bring the child out of them because they have become too much cooked up in their heads all the time sitting in the computer. So to bring out the child within people, they make many exercises like that. But in our temple, when we do singing for the Lord, dancing for the Lord, meditation and eating prasadam, which is a sanctified food. So it's a very clean type of life. I would request all the students uh, to look into uh, these five practices that we do hmm, in our uh, yeah, Hare Krishna Iskhan temples. Five things. A, B, C, D, E. I am going to conclude with this. Okay? A for association. <clears throat> Stay in good association. Hmm. Good association, bad association. Both are available in this world. Hmm. So, it's your choice which association you take. There were two parrots who were brothers. Sold in the market. One was sold to a king. One was sold to a butcher. <clears throat> so one saintly person was walking through the road and he saw the butcher's shop parrot was saying, catch him, beat him, cut him, kill him, like that he was saying. The other parrot sold to the king. That was speaking very sweet words. He said, oh my dear saint, please come and take your seat. And the king has gone for a stroll. Would you like to have some water? Like that he spoke to him. So yeah, he was surprised. How the two parrots are brothers, but they behave differently. And then the parrot said, it's all because of association. I am getting good association, he's getting bad association, he said. So, choose your, choose wisely good association. That's very important. Those who will be uplifting to you, they will not discourage you. Those who will bring the best out of you, not people who will bring the worst out of you. Look for good association, saintly association, that's A. And B stands for books, which are wisdom books, like we have um, Mahabharata, Ramayana, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, we have this Chanakya Niti, Hitopadesha, Panchatantra. They teach many, many lessons for you, for your daily life. In our uh, previous generation, our parents and their parents and all, they all read all these things and they would be talking all the while in the home. But now people have gone far away from this. So take some wisdom from these books. Today I spoke quite a bit from the Gita. But this kind of wisdom is abundantly available for you. That's books. C stands for chanting which I told about the chanting we do in the mala. Even if you don't have a mala with you, you can chant with your fingers also, like we do the Gayatri, we do, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Like the 10 times you do, it's 100 and 108 times you do. Sitting in a park, you can do, take a deep breath and chant the mantra and close your eyes and try to meditate. And immediately your worries will be evaporated. Mm -hmm. So there is chanting. And D for diet. The beginning I told you about diet. What type of diet you eat? Mm -hmm. If diet is in sattva, your sattva is going to increase. You will feel, sattva means sukham and jnanam. You will become wiser, you will become happier. Both wisdom and knowledge comes in sattva guna. Rajaguna means sangha and trishna. Your unwanted attachments increase and thirst for honor, prestige and all those. The thirst for wrong things increases in passion. So our passion is like a flood. Sattva is like a dam. So let dam be, uh, let our mind become like a dam where we can utilize our energies nicely. Okay? That's a D. And the last one, E for engagements which are fruitful, purposeful, meaningful. Do some good work. Huh? Like for example, uh, in our college days, for example, we would clean the entire college campus. Huh? Or we would arrange the books in the library. Sometimes we would go to the villages and uh, do some work for the uh, people in the village also. So we need to do some activities, engagements. Like in our temple, we do a lot of sevas. Huh? We have a six acre uh, campus and a big temple. We do many services. Huh? Like we distribute, uh, you, you know very well in schools, we distribute prasadam in many other schools. So many a times we need a diversion um, apart from our um, academic life and our, uh, otherwise people, the diversion time they're spending with YouTube videos nowadays. Huh? Of course, YouTube, you can learn many good things also. I also put many of my lectures for the students in YouTube, YouTube. I put it also. But there are many harmful videos also. During the corona time, I mean COVID time, one fellow came to me and said, I'm getting dreams of, you know, this corona flying, like a football, huh? in my mind. I'm not able to sleep well. I asked him, did you see some YouTube videos? How many did you see? He said, more than a hundred. He said, it has entered into his head. Huh? Whatever you contemplate on, that's going to occupy your head. Good in, 
good out. Garbage in, garbage out. So you decide what you want to take in. Huh? So the engagements we do should be meaningful, fruitful engagements. Huh? So we need, a, therefore we need some knowledge, first of all, what type of engagements we should take and what we should not take and all that. Hmm. So this is the ABCD formula I told you. I'll conclude with this. Thank you for the valuable time you gave me. This is actually an induction program. Huh? I heard that eight days, you all are going to learn many, many skills and other things. I appreciate uh, Dr. Kulkarani and also the principal and other uh, uh, leading uh, leaders here from your college. Mm. Uh, this kind of program is very vital for you and it is very good for you. Mm. Even before you enter into the uh, first year college uh, courses, you are given a very nice foundation mm, to, and also our professor was, uh, Professor Reddy was telling how the college authorities are willing to serve you all, take good care of you, mm, and, uh, and they are creating a very open culture that you can approach them and take help and uh, flourish as wonderful leaders of the future. So I have been uh, coming here once a year or so in the beginning of the uh, first year. I, I have only addressed about 250 students and this is a very uh, huge gathering, probably around 1,000 students I think here, huh? 700, 800 students. It's very nice to see and uh, I wish you all a grand success in all your earnest endeavors. And uh, my name is Radhesham Das. You can, you can check in the YouTube videos Radhesham Das, you put, and then you can go for behavioral science for youths. That's one of the playlists where I have put about 90 videos similar to this. So there you will learn many things about time management. For example, how do we deal with our mind? How do we deal with anger? How do we, such kinds of things are all discussed there. But um, uh, can I take five minutes, one, one or two questions? Or are we getting late? Five minutes? Just take one question. Anybody? So the first video I showed, you remember how it was, that fellow, right from the brushing. <laughs> so many habits, we learned what, what one fellow is doing, what the other fellow is doing. I, I like that video very much because it, it clearly tells you right from the time you rise in the morning, how your day should go and how it shouldn't go. So, anybody, no question? And there is one hand up here. Please give the mic to here, here. Okay. I travel also to US three months in a year. Now on January 1st, I'll be going. I go from Boston to Brooklyn, to New Jersey, to Washington of DC, then I go to Baltimore, then I go to Dallas and Austin and Houston, and also to San Diego and San, uh, San Francisco, San Diego and LA, and, uh, and also to Seattle. So in all these places where I go, one thing I'll tell you, something I observed in common, when I go to the students, the problems are same, typical. It's not that, you know, boys and girls have gone to America, it's going to be much different there. No, it's typical. Therefore, I understood that the, the Abhyasa and, and the Vairagya told you, this is actually a, a solution for everybody everywhere. Huh? In all these places, any, in those days, I used to admire those universities in IIT days, but when I go there and see that 30,000, 40,000 students there, but many students are having the common problems. So when I'm talking some solutions from Gita, it is a universal, universal book. I recently started a course for the East Coast uh, students. Mm. So when I'm, when I'm doing, I'm, see, I'm, I'm meeting many American students. Mm. They are born in America, Western body, but their problems are similar. If I pinch you, you'll feel pain. If you pinch American, you feel pain. Problems are universal, mm. they're typical. So. If you take a little interest in the subject and read more, you will immensely benefit. Yes, one hand was up. Who was that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Uh, here. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll complete this one. Yeah. Yes, sir, please. 4 30 a.m. Actually, anybody can come. It's open to all. There are about uh, 500 uh, families around our temple. They are all uh, business people or they are all working in IT companies, people like that. So many families come there also. It's open to all. Actually, even in pant shirt or any dress, people can come actually. Of course, the people, some of us wear dhoti kurta, but uh, anybody can come. There is no rule, any rules or regulations. It's open to all.
Thank you. And the weekends, of course, there are very special programs also on the weekends. Festivals like Diwali, now New Year and all, we have very big programs. We have like, uh, you know, 5,000, 8,000 people coming like that for that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, madam. Yes. Can you brief about time management for the students or for the youth? Actually? Time management? Yes. Okay. So, I'll briefly tell about it. It's a very big subject, but <clears throat> uh, again, I was telling you about the three gunas, Tamaguna, Rajaguna, Satuguna, I was telling you. You all know about the four quadrants, you know that? Urgent, important, not urgent, important. Okay. See, if you take the abscess on ordinate, if you take, this is the first one, this is called as not urgent, but important. That's called quadrant two. Urgent, important. Is called quadrant one. So let us talk only about these two first. The, for, I'll tell you a simple example. Say, your wife is uh, telling the husband that gas cylinder will only go for three days. And that is called preventive maintenance. That is not urgent, important. But if the husband doesn't bring the gas cylinder till the third day, next day morning, the preventive maintenance will become breakdown maintenance. It will become urgent, important. Correct? So one of his students is not studying in the beginning of the semester. Hmm? But you have six months to go. It is not urgent, but important. But now the months have passed, you went to play games, you went to movies, you roamed with uh, friends and time went away. Now there is only one week for the examination. Then it becomes urgent important. Then you take the books and you have to study fast. Some people even burn the midnight oil, you know, whole night they are awake and all that. Correct, no? So, should you do it when it is not urgent important? Or should you do it only when it comes to urgent important? Tell me. When it is not urgent important. So, it's called quadrant two. So, in quadrant two, it's called quality of, it's a quadrant of quality, we call it. And quadrant one is called quadrant of action, we call it. If you don't focus on quality, it will come to action. Like myself, I plan my calendar for the whole year. Now, 2020, the calendar is ready with me. I know where I have to go, which month, which, which places I will go. For the whole year, I plan. Because now, when, once I know where I have to go, go <clears throat> then later on, final details I'll keep filling up as the dates come. Huh? But overall mass, I mean, global plan for the whole year, I know very well. So, planning ahead is quadrant two. Relationship building is quadrant two. Training and education is also quadrant two. Hmm? And uh, self-care, exercising and, you know, keeping your body fit is also quadrant two. Hmm? So, looking for opportunities in your life ahead of time is quadrant two. Anything you do ahead of time is quadrant two because it is not urgent but important. Have you heard the saying, a stitch in time saves nine. So you also should be very alert and attentive to not allow the problems to come to quadrant one, which is uh, urgent important. But still, these two quadrants are good. Quadrant one and two are good. Quadrant two is quadrant of quality. Quadrant one is called quadrant of action. But the other two quadrants are very bad, very useless. The third one is called as urgent, but not important. Like for example, how many of you got some phone call which was urgent? When you picked up, you understood it was a useless phone call. Hmm? Correct, no? Hmm? Or somebody called you urgent and they said, two minutes I will take and they ended up taking half an hour. Hmm? Correct, no? It's urgent and not important. Then there are other things which are called not urgent, not important. Hmm? For example, some people socialize a lot with other friends to feel themselves as I am also an important person, I am not alone. I have so many people with me to feel secure, they socialize. Hmm? Some people socialize with others to show that I am very important. They tell the same thing about themselves to many, many people, wasting time. Hmm? Boastful. Right, no? So that takes a lot of time also, when we go around to people talking uh, without self-control. Sometimes, we talk bad about people to others. It's called as sweet talking on face and bad mouthing on back. When we do that, then the friend comes and cries to you. Did you ever say that about me? Then you say, no, 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 I didn't mean that. I said this. And then you write a long uh, message. That takes a lot of time. It goes. So the quadrant three and four, you will see, they are called as quadrant of waste. The fourth one is called quadrant of waste. Not urgent, not important. And the third one is called a quadrant of deception. Why deception? It looks like urgent, but it is not a very important thing. Sometimes people waste your time. Like, <clears throat> like sometimes when you are when you're walking, 
you meet a friend and then you stand in one place and talk two hours later on you realize it was not necessary hmm? correct now so these are the four quadrants the third and fourth quadrant are tamaguna hmm? they are tamaguna rajaguna but the first quadrant is the quadrant two is sattvaguna quadrant that is not urgent important hmm? so uh, four d's are uh, made for each of this for example quadrant two you can decide whether you should do it now or when you should do it or not. You have time to decide. For example, I can study a subject myself or I can ask one of my friends to give his notes and I can photocopy the notes and then I can study that because if he is better in that subject than me. Huh? So you have time to decide because six months are there for me. But the last minute, you know, there is no time to decide anything. You have to do it. That's all. Hmm? Quadrant one is urgent, important. So in this way, Quadrant 1 and 2 are the ones which intelligent students work with. They don't waste time in Quadrant 3 and 4. If, uh, madam, if you want to know more on this, you just put Radhisham Das time management. You put, you will get, in the YouTube you will get. There are two parts, time management 1 and 2. You can go through that, okay? Thank you for the time. I am sorry in case I extended it. Uh, I didn't know exactly what time your morning session gets over. But uh, I am very thankful to all the PSAT leaders here. Um, for doing this good program for all of you with a good intention in mind to help you to prepare your mind for the four years course ahead ahead PSAT is a very very famous university when I when I when I was in IIT I was studying in IIT Bombay so students used to tell me that some people rejected IIT Bombay and went to PSAT mm -hmm. because they got some mechanical in IIT Bombay they wanted computer science they preferred PSAT mm -hmm. so PSAT is in par with all many other premier institutes uh, in the world and you are in a very good college and very good teachers and uh, very focused teachers and principal as well as your director they are all very uh, oriented in a very focused way to make uh, all of you a great success in your life at the same time I would like to add that make a blend of character competence and devotion hmm. these three things uh, blend them together then you will be truly successful and your success will be considered complete. Thank you. Thank you.